Hi everybody, it's Adam and I'm here at uh, STS in San Diego at the 47th annual event um, and we're answering your questions that you posted up at heartvalveblog.com and very excited to be having with me Dr. Roselli from the Cleveland Clinic who is going to be talking today and answering a question all about the latest technology specific to transcatheter valve treatment and the question comes in from Dorothy and Dorothy writes, given the advance in certain treatments like the core valve and the Edward Sapien valve, can you estimate a time when open heart valve surgery will be part of a bygone era? Well done. Th thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for the question, Dorothy. Um, it's a tough one. Um, but I think um, an excellent question because um, for years I think that there's been a lot of discussion about small incremental improvements in valve technology and in the last couple of years we've seen this really exciting explosion in the development of valves from um, slightly better biologic valves to an entirely new way of delivering them. Um, but I think it's important to understand that um, this new technology is not a replacement that should be compared directly against standard therapies. And in fact, none of the valve therapies I think should be compared as competitive. Um, they should be looked at as additional tools in our toolbox to, tr to treat a complex disease, which we don't understand perfectly well enough to deliver the ideal treatment. I'm a surgeon, but I'd be happy if we never had to operate on people. In fact, if we never had to give people pain or suffering in any way at all, and we could cure them, that's the idea. That's what that's we want. A win. That's, that's the bygone era we're looking for. But um, I think that um, when we get to a point where we understand aortic diseases, whether it's congenital diseases like bicuspid valves or, or, or other congenital aortic stenosis or aortic insufficiency problems um, or uh, degenerative valve disease to the point where we can predict when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen at a biologic level, we'll treat it without a mechanical fix. That's when aortic valve replacement as we know it will be a pipe on ear. Now, I, I know that sounds um, like I'm talking around the question, but I think it's totally realistic to think that if you look at where we came, we've, where we've come in the last hundred years, when Dr. Osler, who is probably the, still the most quoted physician in history, talked about operating on the heart as malpractice and totally something that could never be achieved, to um, today when we're talking about delivering aortic valves through a small puncture wound in your groin. Um, it's not inconceivable to think that in our lifetime that we may be able to, um, you know, deliver um, patient-directed therapies to slow or, or eliminate the degenerative processes that are happening in the valves. But probably for, you know, a good generation or so, we're going to see um, all of these various valve therapies be complementary to one each other. And so that it's not one valve fits everybody with any kind of aortic valve disease, but a different valve for a different patient, for mm. a different process. And so we're going to see more of these lesser invasive valves, for example, um, like the ones you've described, but newer valves that are coming out that um, are not, you know, delivered from a puncture wound in the groin, um, but we don't have to suture them in place. So. You know, because that may offer an advantage in somebody like yourself, if you don't mind me describing it, that, you know, you, whose, whose valve needed to be taken out, um, but can, could be delivered through a tiny incision where we can remove the valve, and instead of having a suture in place, it's, it's what's called a suture list or a self-fixing valve. Those valves exist, and uh, they're already going in patients in Europe, and so they add a, a whole nother tool uh, to treat valve therapy. Um, so, was the question 
Can I estimate the time? Yeah, probably in the next couple generations of our lifetime, at least a time that's imaginable, um, but no time soon, and that's okay. Wow. So um, I guess this is why you were the co-chairman of TechCon. You've got a lot of insight into all this new technology and how you're working with it actually today though in your practice, correct? Absolutely. In part of the whole trials that, that are going on and on behalf of all the patients out there and the caregivers as well, I just want to thank you for what you're doing. Your pursuit of healthy hearts, healthy heart valves as well is um, it's to be commended and acknowledged and I just want to thank you because you've been a great supporter of our site and uh, without you and your expertise um, it's just not a great community, um, and you help build it every day. So thank you so much for your help. Thanks, Adam, and, and keep the camera rolling. Thanks to you too, because um, uh, I've known you for many, many years before I was a doctor, and I'm proud of what you do every day with this site. It's awesome. I mean, you help people every day. Yeah. I'm really proud of you. Right. Keep the camera rolling. I'm proud of you too. <laughs> All right, Let's it out. there's a lot of love in the air. <laughs> love this guy.